FY22 result yesterday, look, lots of moving parts with this company, so I'll just try and touch on the highlights. Um, look, in terms of the FY22 performance, um, just a mild beat of expectations, but when you dig deeper, uh, it was a low-quality beat, um, included revenue catch-ups, uh, asset sales, and you know, with higher discount rates, it actually impacts their provisions, so they actually get a benefit coming through from it. Um, probably one of the reasons that um, caused the share price to go down yesterday was their bulk division actually did not grow. It actually went backwards a bit. You might remember that bulk division is where they've been focusing their growth investment. It's where they've been sort of talking about their diversification away from coal. Um, they insist that that bulk segment will rebound to growth next year. And they provided first time FY23 EBITDA guidance. That implies zero to 6% growth uh, over FY22. Um, and look, that includes 11 months of the one rail bulk acquisition. Now, consensus was above the top end of that range. Um, so you would expect that as consensus naturally migrates to the middle of that range, we're actually going to get some um, forecast downgrades coming through today. They also gave some new disclosure on something that affects beyond FY23. So it's an FY24, 25 event. You might know the network business, which is roughly sort of 45, 50% of earnings. Um, it is a beneficiary of higher interest rates and higher inflations through their revenue reset that comes through in those years. Um, they gave, gave some new disclosure on that. Um, it was a little bit less revenue growth than I was actually anticipating, but the offset to that is that the asset base is actually growing faster for network. And that actually helps uh, longer term revenues because the return on a return of capital is anchored to that asset base. Um, so that's a, a sort of a nets out to being net positive in my mind. Funding the um, the one rail acquisition, they are going. No, they have effectively a hundred percent bank debt funded that acquisition so far, entirely floating rate debt. So it's exposed to um, a higher short term interest rates until they term out that debt. For those of you interested in the fixed interest space, uh, Horizon once again indicated that they are considering a hybrid issue in 2023 to help with that funding task or that terming out task. What the balance sheet looks like um, going forwards depends on what happens with their divestment of the East Coast rail business. You might remember that is part of one rail at the moment. It is a um, thermal coal haulage business uh, supported effectively by long-term contracts with Glencore. Um, they are considering either a trade sale or an ASX demerger, uh, so an ASX listing. Horizon said they have thus far engaged about 10 interested players, interested acquirers, so it was quite um, surprising just how many are actually looking at it. Uh, Non-binding bids are due in September. Decision on which way they go, they're saying, is the second quarter, so the December quarter of this year. Let's call it an October decision date, so something to pencil into your diaries for those of you interested in the stock. Um, in my modelling, I've got to make an assumption on what to do here. Um, I've assumed a trade sale. I think they can sell it for about 1.1 billion EV, take off the 500 mil of bank debt that they put against it. There's $600 million of equity. Uh, each $100 million difference around that range is a five cent change on the ultimate equity valuation. So it has an impact on that front and obviously has an impact on the amount of financial flexibility that Horizon has going forwards, just what cash they actually get in the door. Um, Divi, 10.9 cents per share for the second half, um, was actually fully franked. Typically, it's 70% frank, but it was uh, fully franked. It's down 24% on the PCP. Now, don't be surprised about that. That is something that we were expecting. Um, so they've got a typical payout range of 70 to 100%. For a long time, they've been paying at 100. They've reduced it down to 75% payout as part of their funding plan for one rail. They've got uh, another two instalments effectively of that at the lower level at 75% before it kicks back up to 100%. Um, so when we're thinking about the yield at current prices, short term next 12 months, you're getting a yield of around about sort of 5%. Once you actually get back up into that 100% payout, the yield's back up to around about sort of 7%. Um, so pretty, uh, pretty attractive on that front. Now, there is some uncertainty on that dividend, and part of the uncertainty comes from the fact that, yes, they've bought one rail, but they don't actually haven't, haven't finished with the acquisition accounting at the moment. Then that includes what level of uh, depreciation actually goes along with that. Look, I think I've been conservative on that front, but um, we we'll, uh, we'll, won't know until they actually finalise it. If you dig into my numbers, I have actually um, downgraded my numbers by around about sort of 14% on EPS and DPS for FY um, uh, 24, 25. 
Partly that is to do with the depreciation, partly that has to do with uh, the performance of the existing business. Um, but if you look at my target price, uh, it's unchanged at $4.20. So you might ask the question, why is that? And that's because of the impact of the shorter term earnings downgrade is being offset by that uh, asset base growth that I was talking about previously that sort of offsets that impact. So look, um, stock's still on an ad rating, um, given that valuation support and the, the high yield, particularly over time. But certainly with some of the uncertainties here, the conviction on that ad is, is less than what I had previously. Thank you.